Jim and Clara Moore were interviewed many times following Hurricane Hugo. And one thing that I remember clearly, they said, we are not claiming that we saw the gray man, but we saw someone there who then was not there. From South Carolina Public Radio and SCETV, this is South of Spooky. Welcome to South of Spooky. I'm Gavin Jackson. And I'm A.T. Shire. And we are the two ghoulish guides of the spookiest pod in the state. What is SOS? We're not just going to talk ghosts. We're going to experience their stories. This pod is not for the faint of heart. That's how you become the scariest pod in the state. You're going to hear from those who believe in these stories, who have experienced the paranormal, and those who know the history behind some of South Carolina's spookiest tales in haunted places. But you're wondering, who are we? Well, you may know us from our other podcast, The South Carolina League. No, no, not here, not here. But for those who don't listen to the lead, I'm Gavin Jackson. I cover the wild world of South Carolina politics. And AT is the one who makes all of our audio productions sound perfect. Oh, thank you, Gavin. Also, we decided to create South of Spooky out of our mutual love for horror movies, The X-Files, movies writ large, adventure, and of course, the unending quest for the truth. Okay, well, let's not scare them right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> I got carried away, didn't I? You did, you did. That's okay, that's okay. They have to know that we are passionate, okay? I want you to challenge that for them, okay? Let them know that. But are you okay? Can you keep going? Uh, yeah, I- I'm okay. I can keep going. Sorry, I've calmed down. And we also wanted to do this to have some fun by way of learning. First-hand accounts, historical context, and even some good old-fashioned shoe leather reporting. That's Gavin stuff. Yes, I think we've done a fine job of establishing who we are, Gumshoe. <laughs> and this is classic AT and Gavin right here. I gotta tell you. Okay. All right. All right. Let's let's just introduce the episode. Okay. They know who we are now. Okay. All right. All right. In this episode, we're tackling one of the most renowned ghost stories of South Carolina, the Gray Man, or the Gray Ghost, Mm. a harbinger of dangerously destructive hurricanes, as well as protection for those who see him. In fact, the Gray Man is such a well-known story that it's not just us talking about it. It's even been featured on a little show called Unsolved Mysteries. That's the 90s, okay? Oh, 90s, so in right now. (laughs) You know you've got a real story when you get... The Robert Stack Treatment. Roll the clip. Tonight on Unsolved Mysteries, the legend of a gray man. For more than a century, this solitary ghost has wandered the sand dunes of a tiny island in South Carolina. Some residents claim that his ghostly appearances protected their homes from the fury of Hurricane Hugo. Okay, okay. Now, I know you're bummed I cut off Robert Stack. That was getting good, right? But one thing I will promise you, That's the last time I'll ever cut off Robert Stack. Now, you can YouTube that video if you want to after, after you finish this pod, because we did a little digging on the Gray Man on our own. Yes, case officially opened. So, what do we have on this case, Gavin? Well, first of all, it's not a case. It's just a story. We're just going to talk about the history and the legend of the Gray Man. Okay, so what are the clues? Okay, so it's not a case. That means there are no clues. Let's just cool it with the case talk, okay, babe? <laughs> we are uh, getting a little worked up here. We're just going to tell them the story. What are you not getting? Right, so suspects. Who do we have? So we're going to have to do this your way, hmm? Oh, yeah. Case open, baby. <sighs> well, our suspects are the apparition known as Gray Man or the Gray Ghost, as you said. Mm-hmm. It could also be the renowned pirate Blackbeard, a love-stricken Civil War soldier, the founder of Polly's Island himself, the original owner of the historic Pelican Inn. Well, I guess there are quite a few suspects now Uh, that I think about it. Ah, I see. You said suspects. Fine, fine. And, uh, well, come to think, there are a lot of clues out there, too, (laughs) especially down there on Polly's Island, home of Gray Man. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Yes. Road trip. (laughs) Oh, road trip! Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not taking a motorcycle. Oh, now, see, I get what you're saying. No, no, not that either. No Fast and Furious. We're just taking a state vehicle to the coast. 
All right, well, I just got to say, you're obviously not family. Don would never let you say grace at dinner, but can we at least drive the state vehicle with 666 in the license plate? Family, what are you talking Sure, whatever, just get in the car. <laughs> That's compromise, baby. <laughs> So we've arrived in the heart of the gray man country, his home on Polly's Island, a quaint coastal community in Georgetown County, which if you don't know, is a ways south of Myrtle Beach and a good bit north of Charleston. Our own little Grand Strand Bermuda Triangle, if you will. Our first stop is a spooky one, the reference shelf at the local library. <gasps> Ooh, libraries, always spooky. Yes, no human could stack books like this. <coughs> Ghostbusters. <coughs> Anyway, just read these history books, A.T. The librarian was super helpful. We got some good stuff. Let's dig into these books. Uh, but I want microfiche. That's what they use on TV. We don't need microfiche. We have the internet and these wonderful books. Just read them. Fine. Oh, my God. I can't take this anymore. The answers we're looking for aren't going to be in a book. Okay, listen up, you little twerp. This is how this is done. You don't just get any old break in your case by just complaining. You have to put in some effort into research. A clue isn't just gonna randomly fall into your lap. Uh, hoi hoi? Hey, how's it going? Really boring, right? AT, who are you talking to? Up, 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 up. It's our producer from SCE TV, Amy, and she called me. Oh my God, I'm dying, Amy. Please help me. Well, I kind of thought that would be the case, and now you're going to owe me one because your number one producer ran you down a lead. You guys need to talk to Lee Brockington. She's a very well-known storyteller and historian who lives in your neck of the woods, and she has agreed to talk to you. Amy, you baby angel, thank you so much. You've saved me. What did she say? Well, Amy called me and gave us a lead. Oh, like lead like L-E-A-D or lead like L-E-D-E? L-E-A-D, uh, all right? It's not yeah, another podcast, okay. all right? Cross promotion. Yeah, so it's a lead that I'd just like to point out happened to fall right into my lap like a certain someone said that it wouldn't. Well, enjoy it because I guarantee that it will never happen again in any of these episodes. <laughs> all right, well, we'll see. We both are writing these. So anyway, she says we need to go talk to Lee Brockington. Okay, all right. Let me check out the veracity of this lead. Quick Google search, Lee Brockington. Ah, she's a native South Carolinian. She's been involved in public programs, historical research, and media productions since the early 1980s. Okay. She was curator of education at the Historic Columbia Foundation, the senior interpreter of history and culture, at Hobcall Barony and author of Plantation Between the Waters. All right, she checks out. Talese, let's go, let's hit it, baby. <sighs> Talese. All right, we're pulling up Talese's charming salt box style home on this dreary October day. Now, we didn't know Lee until just five minutes ago when we got in contact with her. She had never met us before, but immediately took us in, gave me a cup of coffee. I've never had a cup of coffee. Do you get it now? Do you get it? You see what I'm dealing with? How can we be hardcore spook sleuths if we're not drinking coffee, buddy? I don't know. I didn't know this was a prerequisite. Obviously. Nevertheless, Lee invited us into her warm home, and we took a spot in her inviting wood-lined living room where she spun us her tale of the gray man myth. When I began to vacation at Pauly's Island um, as a 10-year-old in 1969, um, my father and uncle sat on the front porch and told us the story of the gray man. And so you asked me if I believe, and certainly as a 10-year-old, I believed. And then as I age, I continued to tell the story and think of the story as a way for any of these legends to serve as admonitions for good behavior, admonitions for action. And it is the story of the gray man that calls individuals to action mm. because it is the belief that if he is seen on the beach at Pauly's, sometimes there have been stories of him having been seen at Litchfield or on Debbie Dew Island. But if you heed his warning by seeing him leave the island, that you will be spared from the hurricane's wrath. 
Okay, so that's the short version. You see the guy, your house is saved. But there's got to be a long version, right? And Lee is such a good storyteller. Let's dig in for the longer version. Get ready. We believe it goes back to the 19th century. And one version that I tend to believe the most is that a Confederate officer returning from the Civil War Mm -hmm. with his um, former slave, his body servant, as they were called at that time, at the end of the war, after Lee's surrender at Appomattox, they begin their long journey home Mm -hmm. from Virginia. And throughout the war, this individual, this man, has been writing to his betrothed, writing to the young woman who he is engaged to. And as they write, their letters become important to her especially because she misses him so much. She has a lot of time to think about him and to read and reread the fewer letters that he sends to her, and she continues to write to him. She does get word that the war is over, and she knows through his letters that he plans to make a beeline back to see her, back to Georgetown County. But what happened? Mm. As he made his way back in his haste, He took a shortcut and decided he would cut through the marsh, not too far from the mouth of Pauley's Creek as it empties into the ocean. And as he spurred his horse on, now excited that he was so close, he foolishly drove his horse into what some accounts say is pluff mud. Mm -hmm. And what you and I can easily understand was the channel of the creek, narrow enough to be deep, deep sand, and with the incoming tide, his horse is mired, all four hooves mired in the deep sand or the mud of a nearby salt marsh, and the horse cannot move. And even before that rider can dismount, the water rushing in at high tide, driven by strong onshore wind, traps him on his horse. He cries out to be helped, but his body servant dismounts quickly off of his own horse, tries to find some sort of limb to throw to him, to reach out to him, even takes the bridle off of his own horse to throw it out by the reins to reach his former master and to save his life. He could not do it. And in front of his very eyes, he saw the man drown. All the while that this is going on on the south end of Pauly's Island, that young woman's family is realizing that the weather is deteriorating. They continue to load wagons, they continue to pack, and then they begin to wonder, where is our daughter? Where has she gone? And she is out on the beach looking, waiting, and watching as she has done every day, Mm. knowing that he is returning from war. And then they hear her, As they stand on the porch, they're trying to call to her to come on so that they can leave the island because of an impending storm. And yet she's facing out, looking down the beach, and she begins to raise her voice and call to her intended. She sees him walking toward her on the beach. She calls his name. She runs toward him. And yet as she approaches him, he simply vanishes. She cries out again. She looks in all directions. She doesn't see anyone. And then her family continues to call to her. They run down to her because they are wondering, what is she doing? And they literally have to pick her up and carry her back up the beach, through the house, and onto the carriage, and make their way off of the island. When the storm hits, it does a great deal of destruction on Pauly's Island. Houses are destroyed. Rice fields are destroyed. Even the causeway is damaged enough that it has to be repaired for homeowners to come back over. And when homeowners see the destruction, they know they'll have to rebuild, except for this one family whose house has been preserved. Mm -hmm. And we believe it is from that time that people began to believe that not only was the spirit of the gray man a benevolent ghost, but also that he was bringing with him a warning. A warning at that time to his beloved, leave the island, preserve yourself, preserve your family, leave the island, your house will still be here when you return. 
and so strong is that memory of that incident that so many others in successive generations since 1865 believe that if they see the gray man and heed his warning, that not only will they survive by leaving, but also their property might be intact. And there is a storm brewing as there we is. speak. Yeah, it is. Perfect sunny mm-hmm. right now. We'll hear more from Lee later, I promise. But in the meantime, she does have a point. There is some serious weather brewing out there. Is it a hurricane? No. Could you convince me it might be a hurricane? Totally. Dude, Gavin, we gotta hit the beach and try and find this gray joker. It's not a hurricane, all right? Even though we are in hurricane season through the end of November, South Carolina hasn't seen a hurricane since Dorian in 2019. And though we've seen several over the years, One isn't expected on this stormy October day. But we'll go to the beach anyway, cowabunga. It's sandy and cold, perfect. I'm glad I wore my good ghost hunting shoes today. Wait, wait, you you, you have ghost hunting shoes? (sighs) No, just play the audio. They wouldn't even be shoes, they'd be boots anyway. It's 341, we are on the beach here at Polly's, right down north of the Polly's Pier. On a desolate beach here, October 28th, it's a Thursday. Prime spooky season. Now there is no hurricane coming, but there's a lot of activity going on in the atmosphere. We have a storm moving through. It's not a hurricane, no. but we got some angry clouds. We got some angry swells out there. We're looking down the beach, it's empty. Not even seen an apparition of anything. Yeah, I mean, it's gray, it's windy. I see someone in their window. That's, that's a ghost. Great man, if you can hear us, show yourself. Show yourself to us. Is that a bag or a man? I think you see him because you see all that mist kicking up. Maybe you get some fog some days. It's been spotted in the dune. So a lot of these houses have these these walkways over the dunes, or little boardwalks over the dunes. But further down. I don't see any, so it's just more dunes. I wonder if these people, I mean, these houses right here, you got a front row to the beach, storm's coming through. You probably have your eyes peeled all the time looking for this man to bless your house to make sure it survives the storm. I don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, again, we didn't, you know, really have high expectations because it is not hurricane coming to shore. Obviously, hurricane season is about to wrap up too, so we're right on the tail end of it here at the end of October. If not now, when? Right? If not now, when? Yeah. Maybe hoping for a last minute Hurrah! Guest maybe, appearance. Maybe like a, a you know, a, you know, appearance to say, hey, we made it through another hurricane season. No major damage. You're welcome. Yeah. Maybe it's a good thing we don't see him, right? That's a good thing too, right? I would love to see him. I'm not gonna lie. Of course, I'd love to see him, but it's a good. Yeah, thing. just trying to spin this. Hey. There's no storm to warn for because there's no hurricane coming, but. But it's like this is primo spooky season, right? I think this is a bust for us so far. That's yeah, great. I mean, it's, it's raining a little bit. We got a little drizzle going, got some wind. We're committed committed to the craft. I mean, has he ever met a storm he doesn't like? Does it have to be a hurricane? We got to get this guy on the record. Well, that wasn't spooky. Spoiler alert, not spooky. Wet, yes. Spooky, no. Me thinks tis not the proper time to find our gray man. Probably the shoes. Can't get my shoes right. Can't see the gray man. Uh, I'm about to lose it, Gavin. Okay, okay, okay. Calm down, calm down. You're wet, I'm wet. Let's try and regroup at Lee's and figure out our next move. If we're lucky, she probably knows someone or something about seeing the gray ghost. So Lee's totally seen him, right? I personally have not seen him. Okay. Bummer. I personally have not. I have been out We're on. We're all the, the same here, then. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> same boat. Same boat. I have known um, several individuals that have seen him. Have believed that they've seen him. The people that I find some of the most interesting people that I've ever known personally and talked to about this are Jim and Clara Moore. Now, if you do search the gray man on Ye Old Internet, you'll most likely see the names Jim and Clara Moore. Remember that Unsolved Mysteries clip? Tonight on Unsolved Mysteries, Jim and Clara Moore. Yeah, exactly. 
Anyway, back to Lee. As Jim and Clara Moore took their last walk on the beach, imagine how a couple holding hands walking down the beach, imagining, I wonder if this house is going to make it. I wonder if that house is going to make it. But as they passed people, they also said, well, hey, Henry, hey, Bob, where are y'all going to evacuate? Where are y'all going to? Will y'all be safe? Mm -hmm. And as one man approached them, Jim Moore kind of nodded his head, and the man kind of nodded back. And then as he just glanced over his shoulder, he realized, wait a minute, where's that man I just waved to? Jim and Clara Moore had both seen a figure on the beach that disappeared. He didn't go into the water. They didn't, they didn't see him when they looked up toward the dunes. He couldn't have already made it up a staircase and gone into a house. It was momentarily that first nod and then a look over the shoulder. And Jim and Clara Moore, like so many of us, rode out the storm in a safe place and then waited on the word 24 hours later to be able to go over to the island amid down power lines and... A, a newly installed sewer system that literally had been regurgitated by the earth. Jim and Clara Moore drove as close as they could, and as they observed where their house had stood, they saw a very large pile of debris. And so it was their worst nightmare that their house had been destroyed. But as they got out of the car and approached their house, they realized debris had simply washed from the ocean a row or two back and fell against their house and discover that their house was in pretty good shape. Things were good. Mm. And in a joking way, someone said, that must have been the gray man that you saw on the beach the other day. Jim and Clara Moore were interviewed many times following Hurricane Hugo. And one thing that I remember clearly, they said, we are not claiming that we saw the gray man but we saw someone there who then was not there. And I think with just them being so religious and so conscientious and not necessarily believing the legend, not necessarily believing this would ever happen to them, and yet everything fell right into place as to how the story had been told for generations since perhaps 1865. Damn, dude, I don't think we're ever going to find this guy. It's okay, we got the Moore's account from Hurricane Hugo back in 1989, the big one as we call it here in South Carolina. Uh, 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 okay, okay, let's, let's regroup here. All right, what clues have we got? Hugo is the most recent massive storm. What about anything dating farther back? Let's go into the past, like some time between the start of the myth, which we have, and Hugo, which we have. What do we have anything there? Well, I do have an account from April 19th, 1954. Dude, <laughs> don't embarrass yourself. April is in hurricane season. That can't be gray man. Yeah, well, it's about a tornado, not a hurricane. So I just want to differentiate the two. Now, may I recount this story for thee? Everything you're telling me here is... Not Gray Man, so you can do whatever you want. You can let me do this or not? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I mean, go you ahead. Want, you want to hear this? You want to hear this? Go okay. ahead. <clears throat> uh, let me tell you this tale with the headline from the state newspaper, The Gray Man Walks Again and Polly's Feels the Blow. And the story is about how the Gray Man warned not of a pending hurricane like we're talking about, rather tornadoes. In fact, the woman they quoted, a prominent South Carolinian who wished not to be named since she is a person of stability and reliability, not one to let her imagination get beyond the realistic bounds. So she's saying she doesn't want to be embarrassed, right? Let's just well, get clear. We all, we can all relate to that. <laughs> we can all relate. Okay. You know, this is before social media, too. She's just making sure the newspapers don't get her name. I get that. We make, you know, it's all about reputation back in the 50s. She, she's got her profile set on private. Anyway, Gabby, keep going. <laughs> her story is reported as follows. She had just gotten to Polly's about 7 o'clock Thursday night with children and grandchildren, and everyone had gone to the Strand for a look at the ocean. She herself was standing on the walkway to the family house, which is located in the middle of the island. As she stood looking from the dunes over the beach, she saw a man of medium build, dressed in gray from head to toe, start walking north from one of the nearby groins that jut into the ocean. What are you laughing at, A.T.? Groins? 
It is beach terminology. Groins are shore perpendicular structures <laughs> used to maintain updrift beaches. Why don't you just say that then? It's not. It's This is newsprint, my man. I, I, <laughs> you I, cannot I, explain what a groin <laughs> is in newsprint. I don't mean to interrupt. Keep going. Keep going. Man well, dress you, all in gray. That's a dead giveaway. <laughs> yes. Where was I? Fumbles papers. All along the beach. The figure of this man was so real, she wondered which of her crowd he was at first. He walked on by, usually swinging his arms and looking up at the dunes. About halfway between the groins, <laughs> 18, please, which at this place are only a short distance apart, he became less and less distinct. Mm -hmm. Amazed at seeing someone just vanish within clear eye range, she called to one of her family at the edge of the surf, saying, Look at that man, he's disappearing. And none of the others saw him. In a matter of seconds, he became a blur. Mm. Then nothing. Mm. I know, we've all kind of been there, right? Now the article ends saying, she feels like a genuine native-born Polly's Islander now, a new member of the privileged inner sanctum of those who have seen the gray man walk. Spooky. <laughs> a daytime sighting with a bunch of people and She's the only one? I mean, woof. I'll give that some credence. That that does sound a little Jim and Clara Mori to me, right? Mm -hmm. Like someone coming through and then disappearing. Hate that for grandma, though, and mother, because she's just, you know, she say, hey, look at that man disappearing. It's hard to prove that. You know, it's the surf. It's sunny, maybe. It's just uh, this, a warning. This is just part of the groin lifestyle, right? Okay. <laughs> they are there to help save the beach. Man, we didn't see any ghosts. I got to tell you, I'm I'm pretty despondent about this. I'm not I'm not pleased, Gavin. AT didn't get his suspect. Didn't close the case. So sad. This this is going to be a cold case for a very long time, Gavin. I I think this is going to haunt us, pun intended, for a very long time too. Well, yeah, it's good to know he's still out there though, looking over us, watching, waiting. But it's funny to me that in both instances there was an aspect of denial. The Moors wouldn't confirm or deny what they had seen, and that tornado lady didn't want her name out there despite it giving her that feeling of being a true Polly's Islander after her experience. I guess that's the way it goes. Gray Man isn't something or someone that's just here to do tricks on command or appear to just any old somebody who's demanding he shows up. He's a warning you don't want to see. I want this coward to face me. Calm down, AT. You don't want to see him. Also, hey, let me finish this rap, okay? I'm doing really good here. My bad, my bad. All right, <clears throat> let's go over what we've learned here, okay, right? We know he appears before destruction is set to hit Polly's Island. Now it is good if you see him, that means your house will be spared from destruction. But seeing him means there is something in the offing, so not good there. These viewings happen to an unwitting accomplice, someone who isn't looking for him or expecting him, but nonetheless they get pulled in as his co-conspirator, spreading his message of impending weather doom. World's spookiest weatherman, you ask me, man. South of Spooky is a production of South Carolina Public Radio and South Carolina ETV. It's hosted by Gavin Jackson and me, A.T. Shire. Our producer is also me, A.T. Shire. Joshua Teckel is our research assistant. Amy Crouch is our supervising producer, and Sean Birch is our executive producer. You can find this episode and more from South of Spooky on SouthCarolinaPublicRadio.org slash spooky. Have you had an encounter with one of South Carolina's famed ghosts? Maybe experienced a haunted spot in the South? Witnessed something no one would believe? Or have a place or tale that we should investigate? Well, we would love to hear from you. Shoot us an email at spooky at scetv.org and we'll be in touch. Stay safe out there and watch out if you're heading south of Spooky. Spooky.